maintenance of the fire control system Mark 86 is governed by the Navy's overall programs covering both preventive and corrective maintenance, fault diagnosis, isolation and repair. Details are further defined by applicable manuals and ship's doctrine. These resources should always be used to the fullest in any maintenance activity. But our purpose is to familiarize you with the resources designed into the equipments themselves to help you keep your system online and up to par. We'll look at different situations to suggest what's available to back you up. For instance, let's assume the operational program is in and cycling and everything's normal. Then you get a casualty. Loss of radar video at the control officer console called the COC. Loss of any display is real trouble and the SPQ-9 indicators help start us on the track to find the fault. The radiate and operate indicators have gone from green to red. There are indicators like this all through Mark 86, and so they're an important troubleshooting resource. You want all the facts you can get as fast as you can get them, and one of the fastest ways is through visual inspection. At the SPQ-9 receiver unit, another indicator shows red, the OPC alarm common. Alarms like this are an important basic resource, and so are meters. The negative 150 volt position on the volt amp monitor meter reads zero. Another important fact, a fuse holder is lit, indicating the fuse is blown. A display label right at the equipment identifies the fuse as the one for the negative 150 volt power supply. With these facts in hand, the investigation continues into the documentation the one-line functional diagram defines the exact subunit that has failed and is causing the trouble. For safety, the radar is switched to local control and is deactivated to pre-standby. To confirm the casualty, the power supply is removed. Then a resistance check is made. It reveals that the casualty is internal to the power supply. Now comes another fundamental resource when it comes to repair. The Mark 86 design being modular, the failed item is replaced on a one-for-one -one basis. Fast, positive repair. Collecting all the data at each successive point in the sequence isolated the problem. Now comes proof positive. The radar is up again. And PPI display is normal. That's the payoff. The system is back online, fully operational. You'll be running daily system operational tests, and these will sometimes pick up trouble before it can do any harm. The data entered by the keyboard on the gun control console, called GCC, should be displayed when the retrieve push button is depressed. But it's not happening. Now the idea is to gather every single fact that relates to the problem so the trouble can be isolated. The operator already knows that the interface between the console and the computer is accomplished at Unit 6, the Signal Data Translator, also called the SDT. A clue to the trouble could be found there. The data decal on the door is another important maintenance resource that's easy to get to and fast to use. A quick check of the decal indicates the input word format for the data flow of the retrieve function from the console to the computer. Then it's easy to set up the data word containing the retrieve bit on the unit maintenance panel.
a resource that's more elaborate than simple alarms and meters. Availability of data at the monitor panel would indicate that the SDT is receiving the console inputs, but the retrieve bit is not being displayed. The likelihood is that the console is not generating data, so the investigation has narrowed down to the console, and it's a case of digging deeper. Checking schematics and manuals to localize the faulty functions even further by analyzing the circuitry of the retrieve function. The documentation defines where the retrieve bit originates. Logic file 3 in the GCC console itself. A quick probe of the test points built into the cards narrows the chase down to a specific logic card. Using the extraction tool that comes with the console, the defective logic card is removed. and replaced with a new one. A scope check on the new card indicates proper operation. The retrieve function is now available at the monitor. And the console is returned to service. Mark 86 is designed with many features that make maintenance and repair fast and efficient. But it takes know-how and sometimes dogged determination to dig out all the facts you need so you can then take advantage of these equipment maintenance resources to come up with the solution. The system is operating in air action mode involving the SPG-60 air track radar. The GCC operator has selected the comb filter display, and the display is normal. Now range gate B drops out, and the operator has a casualty on his hands. The documentation points him toward the signal data converter, unit 22, and the receiver, unit 18 each a part of the SPG-60. He checks that voltages and fuses are okay. The decals provide voltage level information and test data. The unit maintenance panel contains data input and monitoring capabilities. The decal puts it all together in one place, easy to see and use. The input words for a standard static test setup. After switching from computer to local control, the nominal output parameters for the receiver identified on the decal are set up by manually entering the bits at the maintenance panel. The required static test condition is now available. He monitors the appropriate word and then verifies that there is no indication for range gate B leading to the next level of investigation in this fault isolation process. Documentation indicates the probable fault is among the receiver acquisition channels for range gate B. Probing soon picks up a failed limiter, a modular replaceable unit. So repair is quick and easy. With the radar back under computer control, the comb filter display is again normal. We've seen that Mark 86 design makes it possible to isolate faults and make repairs with minimal disturbance to the rest of the system. In the example just shown, only the SPG-60 was taken offline, while the rest of the system remained up. But there are times when it may be necessary to take the whole system offline, something we want to avoid unless it's absolutely essential.
For example, the operator notices that the track symbol or hook motion for the track while scan acquisition channel in use is erratic. The operator promptly checks documentation and runs a series of tests at the console itself using the operational program and continuing with signal tracing. But the problem remains and the difficulty is not resolved. This means the search has to go further, dig deeper for more facts that together will lead to the fault and its correction. The system maintenance tape will provide the best aid for fault diagnosis and isolation. Following the guidance in the documentation, he moves to the signal data converter unit 20, where the tape reader is located. This is used to read in the Mark 86 operational program tape when required, or the system maintenance tape whenever necessary. The operator first makes sure the tape is fully rewound. Then, at the computer panel, he presets the specified keys that will control loading the tape into computer memory, and then presses Start. Instructions for cycling the program through any test phase are contained in OD45432. Based on this document, the operator selects such a program and starts its cycling. So the same signal sequence is repeated throughout the system. Fault isolation instructions call out a succession of control positions at one or more consoles, with monitoring of displays by the operator in order to narrow down the problem the maintenance tape recycles the program selected as long as necessary until the operator is sure he has obtained all the information available with that program. The operator at the COC console selects the air track symbol and acquires all track while scan symbols. If things were normal, the track symbols would be diagonal and separated by even steps. But the display is jumping and the operator uses this display condition to continue his analysis. The display itself acting once again as a basic maintenance resource. Pressing navigation slows track symbol motion down as the test tape continues to cycle the program for this phase. Returning to the faster rate, each symbol is checked individually and then together. The problem continues, but the operator knows a diagonal pattern consists of both vertical and horizontal components. So he now checks the y-axis by selecting TDT3. Here the symbols are stable. Selecting TDT4 brings up the x-axis. And there's the problem. The horizontal pattern jumping erratically. According to the schematics, the fault is in the x-circuit display system. So they now know where in the system to look. The fact that the identical program continues to recycle for as long as needed will facilitate the testing that finally locates the faulty module. Track symbols are now operating properly. Then the operational program is read back into computer memory. And the computer is restarted. Mark 86 is back online, fully operational, ready for action. There is no substitute in maintenance and troubleshooting for digging out and collecting all the facts when you've got a problem. 
but it's good to know Mark 86 is designed to help you do your job effectively and efficiently by putting a wide range of fault diagnosis and isolation resources at your fingertips. Get to know them well, and they'll be among the best tools you have for keeping the gun fire control system up to par and on the air.